Responding to the fire in the Box Canyon area, the crew could sense it was going to be a long day. The smoke was white, indicating a grass fire, but soon began to darken. The fire had burned into heavy fuels and was now threatening a half dozen houses when the first engines arrived. The captain and his two engines set up to try to keep the fire from jumping the road. Calling for more engines and a tractor, the men had their hands full just holding their position and could do nothing but watch as the fire roared up the mountain. Ventura County had received a number of war surplus D6 Caterpillar bulldozers and stored them at strategic points around the county. In 1950, many of the Ventura County volunteer firemen were farmers skilled in the operation of heavy equipment. When called, they would leave their jobs and take a tractor to the fire. Most fire stations in Ventura County were staffed by a single career captain who lived with his family in the firehouse. On receiving a call, the captain sounded the house siren and left with the first five volunteers to arrive. The primary task of a tractor is to remove vegetation and create a fire break, the size of the break being defined in blade widths, one blade, two blades, four blades, and under extreme conditions, as many as 15 blade widths. Though an effective firefighting tool, the bulldozer was a very dangerous one as well working on steep, uneven terrain, unprotected by a safety cage or roll bar, the operators really had to know what they were doing. Although bordered on the south by the city of Los Angeles, Ventura County was an area of rural beauty with small towns intermixed with prosperous farms and lots of California mule deer that are forced to flee as the fire advances. The Marines arrive as the fire approaches the bulldozed firebreak Every fire chief can use a few more good men, particularly when they bring their helicopters. The Sikorsky helicopters are small, but they do their best to wet down the fire line. The use of helicopters for fighting fires was still very experimental and there was a lot to learn. Using a helicopter as an aerial hose wagon seemed to work well at this fire, but the pilots voiced concern over the loss of control if the hose snagged and the practice was seldom used.
Using the helicopter to move heavy equipment was also a great idea, but it took a couple of times for the ground crews to learn how to tie the right knots. From these first crude beginnings, helicopters have become an indispensable part of fighting wildfires. In many parts of Southern California, the first alarm brush fire assignment now includes one or more helicopters. More than anything else, helicopters have become the eyes of the incident commander. Following the winding path of the makeshift waterway created from irrigation piping and portable tanks, the IC is able to view the progress that has been made and the efforts of his men as they advance hose to extinguish the remaining pockets of fire. The enjoyment of the spectacular view is diminished as one sees the magnitude of destruction caused by the fire. The green edge, where the firefighters made their stand, is a stark contrast to the barren, burned-over slopes. At base camp staging, the men wait patiently for the order to return to quarters. They have done their best, the fire is out, and yet they can do nothing to stop the next devastating event to come. Sooner or later, the rains will start. Cascading wildly down the denuded slope, the rainwater strips the unprotected earth from the hillside. The rivulets grow larger and larger as they roar down the valleys, draining into the Santa Clara River and onto the sea. With vegetation on the hillsides, the runoff is slowed and the river can handle the flow. Too often, the fires have so destroyed the grass and brush that the river cannot handle the water and overflows its banks. Everything in its path is destroyed. 